So, uh, yeah. So, uh, already participants have uh, put you one is there. So, I think uh, if you have a star, you have already we can start, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, dear participant, good afternoon. And uh, uh, as per your routine, there is a little change in the today, this class. Uh, this is a new class added in the last moment because the resource person who is assigned for this class have some medical emergency. Uh, okay, so in the last moment, we change the schedule. This is for your kind information. Now, uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Najim uh, from Aligarh Muslim University, he will take this class on open source uh, resources, open source. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Najim, welcome you in 6FIP program. And we are very, very grateful to you in the last moment within the uh, half an hour. Uh, I requested you and you are ready for this lecture. So really, this is a great help for all of us. And uh, Dr. Najim is an associate professor in Department of Library Information Science, uh, Aligarh Muslim University, a renowned scientist and uh, working very uh, seriously, published many papers in the uh, many international journals. Recently, he uh, successfully completed one research project from ICSSR. So by this, he is a very sound knowledge of the uh, research, teaching and research. So welcome you, sir, uh, Dr. Najim. And now I am handing over the session to you for your presentation. Thank you, Professor Manoj Kumar Barma and Professor uh, Bhartendu Singh Ji. Uh, I'm really very much uh, happy and this is, uh, I'm really happy to just uh, get the opportunity to speak in a, this particular platform because uh, this is the, the program, uh, faculty development program and uh, almost all the <clears throat> uh, participants are teachers. So it is uh, very difficult for me just to, uh, to just in, uh, I cannot say that that is teaching because it is just an interactions because all, all are my colleague. And so teaching teachers is not possible for me. So this is just an, a, a kind of interaction uh, between the teachers. So <clears throat> thank you very much for this, the, uh, the, the uh, HRDC of uh, Mizoram University for providing me with this opportunity to speak on a topic that is open access scholarly communication. So I'm really thankful to uh, the di <coughs> director of the uh, HRDC Center and uh, uh, Professor Manoj Kumar Barma ji for providing me this opportunity. So can I uh, start now? Uh, can I, I uh, share yeah, my? Yeah. Okay. You can start. You can share your. Video. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is visible, make it presentation mode. So it is, uh, I hope this is, uh, this PPT is visible. Yeah, PPT is visible, make it presentation mode. It is still, it is okay. not. Okay. Uh, yeah, now presentation mode, moving, sir, moving. Okay, okay. So this is the topic of uh, today's debate or discussion that is open access scholarly communication, academic and e economic and soci societal impact. So, uh, before discussing about the concept of open access, yes. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. So, before uh, discussing the concept of open access scholarly communication, it is important for us to know what is the meaning of scholarly communication. So, scholarly communication is a process. Most of us, most of uh, the participants may be aware of this process that is the creation, publication, dissemination, and discovery of academic research. And particularly in peer reviewed journals, as well as in books or even in conference proceedings. So we can say there are two different for forms of uh, scholarly communication that is formal and informal. And uh, the formal channels of scholarly communication may include uh, peer-reviewed peer journals, uh, articles which are published in the conference proceedings, as well as books and chapters which are published in the edited books. Informal, informal uh, 
channels of the scholarly communications, maybe blogs and uh, other social media platforms where we can just communicate. We, we can share our research and we can share our uh, scholarly work with other scholars. So there may be uh, both formal as well as non-formal channels of the scholarly communications. But here uh, the, the, the process and the life cycles of the publication or scholarly communication can be uh, understood here. That is, uh, we start with the, some ideas and we try to create our uh, research and that is to be uh, submitted for the, for the funding. And then it is uh, sent for evaluation that is uh, academic evaluation or peer review process. And then finally it is uh, published and got uh, submitted for publications. And after publication, it is disseminated. And uh, this dissemination is basically through the libraries as well as through online databases and different other mediums through which the information which is published, that is the research which is published can be disseminated and provide access. We can preserve for future use and then the work which is published may be reused by some other scholars. So this is the whole process of scholarly communications. Now come to the traditional model of uh, scholarly communication that is we call subscription model of scholarly communications where uh, the process is start from <clears throat> the publicly funded research conduct research and write up results that is most of the research in the field of science and technology is funded by the government and different funding bodies and then uh, with the, there is not necessary that all the research is funded okay so, uh, maybe uh, some research may be funded, some may not be funded, but whatever the situation may be, the after creation of the manuscripts, it is uh, submitted for publications in journals and it is uh, passes through the review process and then it is accepted for publications. Then authors transfer copyright to publisher and no author can be, no, no rights can be uh, retained by the authors. Then our articles published, uh, which are uh, published in this particular model that is called subscription model, they are locked behind the paywalls. That is everybody cannot use, everyone cannot use this, uh, the results of the re research. What, can, what we can do, we can purchase either individually or the libraries on behalf of the researchers and academicians can purchase different journals and databases and then make it available to their uh, faculty and their students. And even after paying for access, readers are granted little or no reuse rights of such types of research. And this is causes a slow scientific progress and poor return on public investment. So this model we are basically observing and we have, uh, we have seen this model is still this model is uh, established and uh, to break this uh, traditional model, which is based on the subscription of journals. And uh, this is basically uh, discriminate uh, the access between those who have resources and those who have not resources. That is depends on the money, which is given to the particular academic institutions. Some academic institutions receive funding, much funding, and some institutes may not receive uh, such level of fundings like IITs and uh, other kinds of institution, in institution. So there is a kind of discrimination between the access. Okay, some institution getting more access because they have more, more, more funds, some institute may not. So this types of uh, uh, publication model is not suitable and it cannot be said it is a democratic model or it is very good model, but still we are using this model and this model is replaced uh, it is replaced not replaced but we are trying to replace and the researchers and different stakeholders are trying to replace this model by open access model but it is not replaced till now but the, we will try to see how much progress have been made in this particular area so this is very important so open access is one of the component open of, of, of the open science that we need to understand because it is one of the aspects of the open science open science is an umbrella term which include different uh, other uh, aspects of, uh, of the open access uh, movements. So open science is the movement to make scientific research, including publications, research data, physical samples, so, and software, and its dissemination accessible to all levels of society. So this open science is a broader term, and open access is one of the aspects of open science. Some recommended open science practices include pre-registration, so this is also very important because this open science term is also 
uh, it, it becoming very much common or famous because the whole research process should be should be transparent. Whatever the research being done, it should be transparent. So this transparency of the research can be possible by different stages that is called pre-registration, where after preparing the proposal for a particular research, it need to be submitted in a particular public platform or online public platforms. Then uh, the researchers of the same fields can view that proposal and may, uh, may suggest some changes and some recommendations. So this proposal, at the initial stage, we prepare the proposal for a research. This to be submitted in a, in, a, in a particular online platform. There are many platforms. One of the famous platform is Open Science Framework, where you can register, you can submit your proposal, and you can get the, 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 the comments from the expert in the same field. So this is called open pre-registration process. Then open methods. That is what it, whatever the methods that uh, our researcher adopted in the in his or her research, it should be uh, it should also be disclosed. It should also be uh, make it available to public. Then open peer open peer review system. That is uh, in case of peer review that we have submitted the manuscripts and then it is sent to for two or more than two peer reviewer uh, reviewers and uh, this the report of the reviewer is not disclosed for the public. It is basically between uh, the editor and the authors, but not for the for other people. But today, the open peer review means the reports should be should be made public, and uh, a link of that reports will be provided in the in the publications. If somebody want to know what is the whole process of peer review system, it can be viewed. And there is Publon. Publons is a basically platform or website where uh, uh, the different peer review reports are publicly available of different articles. So this is a new aspects of uh, reviewing process for the research. Then open data means whatever data you have used in your research, it should be available for the public. That making collected data publicly accessible, accessible for further analysis. So this is there are two different important purpose of this uh, open data system that uh, the data which you have collected in a particular area, if it is available, the duplication can be avoided. If somebody wants to do the research on the same area, that the, the duplication of efforts can be avoided by using the same data. And then it is also uh, just uh, uh, make your research more uh, important because uh, the data is when you are putting in the public domain. So obviously this data is uh, maybe is correct data and there is no, no manipulation in the data if you are submitting it or putting it in the public domain. Then finally, the, the whole uh, manuscripts made, made, should be made it available to the public free of cost. That is free online availability of a research outcome and the right to use that research with acknowledgement. So open access is one of the components of open science where the process is that to make your research trans, uh, transparent. The whole research should be transparent and it should have the impact. So this is uh, very important, important for us to understand that this open access is one of the component of the open, open science. So what is open access publishing? This is important for us to know. Open access, a publication which can be considered as open access when there are no financial, legal, or technical barrier to accessing it. It means we need not to pay something for that. If you want to access, you want to read a particular publication, research publication. So there is no uh, need to pay for that. That is financial involvement is not there. There is no legal, you are not legally uh, doing anything wrong if you are using that or reading that particular publication or research publication. And there is no technical barrier. That is uh, the, because you have to, you must have the internet connections for using open access publication because there is no possibility of open access publication in case of printed publications. So anyone can read, download, copy, distribute, print, search for, or in, uh, or in education or any other way within the legal agreements. So you can read it read kar sakte on a screen and you can just download it, you can copy, you can distribute to other people, you can print. And you can still there is uh, this publication is not without copyright. There is some some kinds of misperceptions among, among the people because copyright uh, is a very broader term. So you can use it 
for without financial uh, benefits okay but uh, there is uh, you cannot sell it you cannot uh, you cannot make money for this for the publications of others so still there are some kinds of rights this is not totally right free publications but you can use for your own academic research you can read it for for your own purpose but uh, you cannot use for for the purpose of financial benefits there are certain myths about the open access publishing. So open access publishing doesn't mean that you as an author will give away copyright. The copyright you have as an author, copyright is not you are giving up and uh, the uh, or your publication be, will be published without, without peer review. There is misperception, but there are many open access journals whose and the impact factor of this open, those open access journals is higher than the Non open access journals, particularly the open access journals of public library of sciences, having uh, the more impact factor than those in the same field uh, with, uh, with the, uh, the non open access journals. So there is misperceptions about this quality and the peer review process. Open access articles are also peer reviewed and they have proper quality, proper check. But there, the problem is that is predatory journals are there in different areas. And this is in case of printed journals as well as uh, uh, subscription-based journals. So, ye possibility to dono tarah ke journals mein hoti. But uh, there is misperceptions among the people that open access uh, articles and open access journals are, are not, not qualitative and they are not basically following the process of review. So it is incorrect. Your publication will not be indexed in scholarly databases. This is another misperceptions among the people that uh, the article which is published in the open access journal is not included in the scholarly databases. So we will discuss in the, some of the next slides that uh, many journals are included in the renew, uh, reputed uh, databases like Web of Science and Scopus. So there is uh, this, this is not correct aspects. Your publication will not have an impact factor. This is also a misperception because I have already mentioned one of the example of public library of science journal, where uh, the impact factor is of open access journals are higher than that of uh, non-open non, non access journals. So there are three important declarations or statements related to this open access initiatives. And I, I hope that most of uh, the participants are aware of these three important uh, initiatives, uh, that is Budapest Open Access Initiative and uh, with this uh, statement on open access publishing and the Berlin declarations. So not necessary to discuss. This is uh, the initiative which, are taken, which, are, which have been taken in the early uh, uh, 21st century for making the open access movement successful. So there may be three different uh, types of op op open access publishing, and this is gold, green, and high build. So it is also important for us to know what is the difference between these gold, green, and high build. So publication of article in an OA journals and making it freely available immediately after publication by the journal uh, publications on its website. So this is called gold immediately it is available for public. Green means it is not pub published in the open access journals, may be published in open access journals or may not be published in the open access journals, may be published in subscription-based journals. But uh, there, the, the authors are allowed to self-archive their article in some of the institutional repository, that is preprints, not postprint. This is also a very important aspect that uh, as a research, researcher and academician, everybody must know about it. The difference between preprints and postprints is that preprints means the, the copy which you have submitted and it is reviewed and after correction and the incorporation of the reviewer comments. This is preprints of the publications. And postprints means that is the final version, that is final PDF versions of the publisher. This is called postprint. So most of the uh, publishers of the journals allowed their authors to self archive their, the preprints of the articles, not post print of the articles. So preprints can be submitted or can be self archived in the different institutional repositories. Even you can submit in uh, academia and uh, research gate, that is different academic social networking platforms. But uh, it is better to submit in the uh, institutional and subject specific repositories 
where uh, the, 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 the pupil of the same professions can read your uh, research. So this is called green open access. And the hybrid is basically the, the, the journal, uh, the, the, a journal having two different modes of publication. Some of the articles in an issue of a journal may be published as open access, and some of them are not. It means if you, as an author, an author is submitting or depositing article processing charges, that is publication fee. That is called our article processing charges. If an author is submitted or deposited article processing charges, the article will be accessible in public domain. That is open access. If somebody is not willing to uh, pay for that, then it will be uh, in closed. So, uh, that is subscription mode. So that uh, the issue of a same journal may have suppose 10 articles published in an issue of a journal. Out of 10, five may be open access articles and five may not be open access articles. So this is called hybrid model where the same journal, the same issue published uh, are 10 articles out of that five may be open access and five may not be open access. And there are pure open access journals where all the articles are open access. So this is gold, green and hybrid model. And in between there are some more uh, open access model that is uh, uh, <coughs> gray and black and white. So I'm not going to discuss that model, the, which basically the, the major models are gold, green and hybrid. So one of the easy way of making your research publicly available or freely available is green, where you can submit your preprints, you can deposit your uh, uh, preprints in any of the institutional or subject-based institutional repositories where everybody can read your research. This is a very easy way of making open access successful. But, but in other cases like gold and hybrid, what you need to do, you need to pay article processing charges, which is very difficult in case of in our country, particularly in India, where most of the journal demand article processing charges in dollar and the euro. So uh, sometimes if your research is not funded research, then it is very difficult for you to just make uh, this article processing charges, payment of this art APC is very difficult. So this is open access publishing process, uh, process and the different modes of open access publishing. So researcher decide where to publish. So, okay, there are the, the researchers have different options. Uh, we have already discussed that is hybrid options, gold open access and green and green open access and hybrid open access. So there are three different option, options for the uh, researchers. So suppose uh, 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 the researchers want to publish in open access journals. So uh, the researcher need to pay article processing charges if required. This if required means not necessary, necessarily all, all journals are not basically demand for, all open access journals uh, do not make a demand for article processing charges. Uh, there are some journals which are publishing research without uh, collecting ar article processing charges. There are some journals which demands APC. So uh, whatever may be the case, whether it is uh, APC based journal or without APC based journal, and then uh, after publication, the, your articles will be immediately uh, available for public. That is immediately open access. This is called gold way route. Another route is that is published in a subscription-based journal. Subscription-based journal means the traditional system of publishing. We have already discussed it. So publish, publish in a subscription-based journal. Then what we need to do, we need to search OA repository. OA repository means an institutional repository particularly the subject specific institutional repository. Suppose somebody belong to physics, somebody belong to computer science. So he, she need to find a specific subject repository in his particular area. And then for that, this is a, the website is open door ORG where all the institutional repositories are listed and you can easily find a specific repository which can be related to your purpose. And then self archive a repository in a repository based on the publisher policy. This is also very important. That is, it is not very, uh, it is not in black and white. It is very basically a gray area. So every everything cannot be put it. And just one thing I have mentioned that uh, uh, you can submit only the preprint. And uh, I have already explained the difference between the preprint and postprint. This is one aspect of self -arch archiving. And the other aspect is basically the 
the the embargo period embargo period means uh, there is certain locking period decided by the publishers you cannot immediately make it available to the public at least 6 month one one year depending upon the policy of the publishers there are some publishers uh, which are uh, who uh, which provide uh, which which having the uh, locking period around 6 month one month two month and one year so for that what we need to do we need to check a website sherpa romeo website for oi and open access and self archiving options so this website provide you the policy of every journal and publishers self archiving policies so before self archiving or making your research or preprint open access uh, the researchers need to just check the policies of the journals whether there is if there is a, a locking period or delayed period or that is called basically the uh, embargo period so it should be checked otherwise it is the violation of the uh, violation and uh, we, can, we are uh, avoiding with that particular aspect so after uh, checking the policies of the journals then we can make it publicly available so even the article is published in the self, say in the subscription based journal author can make it publicly available make it open access and the preprint can be can be submitted or can be deposited in the institutional repository or even at the research gate and or any other uh, social network networking platform but still there are some obligation that we need to check the policies of the journals the third option that is hybrid option hybrid journal where subscription based journal without with paid open access options so this is high, uh, subscription based journal but the option is given Uh, if you are paying apc then your article will be published in open access domain that we have already discussed not need to discuss here again so the question is that is why we need to choose open access model is there any benefit so there are different benefits of the open access publishing that we need to follow adopt as a researcher we need to adopt open access publishing that is one thing which is very important for the researcher is that is wider access wider access means something which is visible has a chance more chance to be uh, sold that is jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai if more people are just uh, able to uh, access your articles your research more uh, researchers are able to read your research then obviously they will be they will cite your research but the problem is that there is a established procedure of measuring the impact of the research there are different methods uh, which have been emerged recently but the old method is that is the citation number of times your article has been cited on the basis of that the impact of the research is measured and one of the reliable uh, metric is that is general impact factor but today we have individual uh, impact factor of individual researcher individual art articles so there are uh, the but still we are very very much re reliable on the citations so wider access if it is available in public domain more people can access your research read your research and when more people are able to read your research increase citation and impact this is ultimately because more people will see your research then they will cite it increase visibility drive research innovation and faster availability of and searchability so availability and searchability means that is indexed in different uh, Uh, databases so this these are the different advantages of the research for uh, open access publications but for the researchers two important thing is that wider access and increased citation impact and increased visibility these are the three important things for the researchers to choose open access publishing otherwise uh, your publications will be uh, will be uh, read or access by only those people where the, uh, the particular journal is subscribed now come to the trends of open access publishing uh, still we are uh, not uh, reached to the 50 50 but at least uh, around 20 30 percent of the total literature which is published is open access so now come to the one by one that is open access journals we can see the trend of open access journals so the directory of open access journals in, in includes more than 70 around 18 18000 journals which are included in the open uh, directory of open access journals so around 18000 journals are open access in in the in the world 
out of which around uh, 12,000 journals, open access journals, do not charge article processing charges. So this is very important thing that we need to understand. We have more than 12,000 journals, open access journals, which do not charge article processing charges. So for, for the authors belong to India and other developing countries, we have the options. There is an option that without paying, we can publish in open access. There is no restriction for us. So this is more than 7.5 lakhs articles are included, published in these journals. And uh, these uh, around 18,000 uh, journals are published by more than uh, around 130 countries in the world. Now come to the Scopus. In the Scopus database, around 27,000 journals are indexed from the different countries of the world, out of which around 7,700 journals are open access journals. And the ratio is around 28%. It means 28% journals which are included in the index data, Scopus databases, and 28% journals are open access journals. If you can see the wave of science where the 26% journals are open access journals. So now we can see in case of journals around 30% or 25 to 30% journals are open access journals in the world. So we, uh, the movement started in 2001 and now we are in 2023. So still we are, we, we are basically, this is the achievement that around 30%, so 25% to 30% journals of the world are open access. This is uh, the, uh, the, the screenshot of the um, uh, Scopus database where you can see uh, the options of selecting open access journals. So here only open access journals. So uh, this is uh, not able to see that are, uh, the data because there is a screen. So, uh, if you uh, opt this open access journals, you will find the data about the open access journals. So only open access journal will be displayed here. So if you want to check uh, the open access journals in your own subjects, what you can do, you can select this open access journal option. Then you can select the subject area, your subject area. Then you will find the list of open access journal in your own subject areas. And then uh, you will also be able to find uh, the journals which uh, charge APC and not charge APC. And this is possible through the directory of open access journals. If the same journal can be searched in the directory of open access journals. And you will be able to uh, know whether a particular journal which you have selected charge APC or not charge APC. This is also possible. The another aspect of uh, that is open access repositories, particularly for green open access. So we can see the growth of this open access repositories from 2005 to 2000. This is data, we have data from the last year that is June 2022. So more than around 6,000 uh, open access repositories in different subjects are uh, established in all over the world. This data is taken from the open door. Uh, this is the directory. This is the database of different institutional repositories of the world. If we see the country-wise uh, scenario, so we can see in India around uh, this data is old. Maybe now that this data may be changed, maybe more than 1,105. The around 105 uh, repositories are established in India. In India, so we have also uh, been good progress. And if you just see the ranking of uh, the uh, the India's position in the ranking of this uh, institutional repositories, so we have not far away. Okay, still we, uh, we have 11 and 12 positions, occupied uh, 12 position or 11 positions. So more than 100 institutional repositories uh, have been established by different uh, uh, academic and research institutions in our country. Now we can see the ratio of open access literature. We have already seen the open access general ratio. Now the ratio of open access publications and open access literature. So uh, around 30% literature, which is published during 2002 to 2021 in Scopus database, in the, in the journals which are included in the Scopus database, around 30% uh, literature is open access. Similarly, in, the, in case of Web of Science, 
at the around 29.65, around 30% literature is open access. It means out of 100 articles which are published in, in, the, in the journals, which are indexed in open in Scopus and Web of Science, around 30% articles or 30 articles are open access. So how we can detect the open access publication? This is the screenshot of uh, Web of Science core collections. What we have done, we have collected the literature from 2003 to 2022. And uh, here we found this number of articles have been published in the journals, which are included in Web of Science core collection database. And we have opted, uh, we, have, we can see all open access. This is the number around uh, uh, this is the number around 10, 30 percent we have already seen and this different kinds of open access gold gold hybrid three to read green published green accepted and green submitted so you can easily identify the open access articles uh, from this uh, web of science database or even scopus database so today if you are your library is not subscribing any of the journal what you can do you can search open access articles through this web of science or a Scopus database and of the open access options and then all the articles will be accessible to you. There is no restriction for the use and read, uh, use and download of these articles. So this, uh, this we will uh, discuss in the, in the, in, in, in the uh, next slides about the impact. So we will discuss that things, but this is basically the, the, the gap uh, is basically being reduced. Uh, that is, we have at the beginning. I have discussed about the gap. That is, some the, the institution which having resources uh, have uh, monetary resources have more access to research, and those institutions which have not having such types of resources have lack uh, chance of accessing uh, the the resources. So this gap is basically reduced because now we have the option to use open access publications. If we can see, this is not my research. This is I am taking uh, this data or this uh, figure from a research, a large scale research uh, by this uh, Pyogar uh, in 2018. So if we can see the, uh, the open access availability of literature in different subjects. So we can see biomedical research is, uh, uh, is taught, taught in the field of biomedical research, open access research are uh, publications are available. Mathematics, clinical medicine, health, earth and space, biology, physics, science, psychology, and social sciences have uh, lower level of open access publications. So engineering and technology is still more lower than lo uh, level of open access availability. Not, not, this data is basically not uh, in, in that manner. Uh, we can see that social sciences uh, and professional fields are lacking the availability of open access publishing. Engineering and technology is more open access. Uh, this is basically on uh, the percentage we can see. So this is uh, uh, green open access, and this uh, yellow show the gold open access, and this uh, show and, and show the hybrid open access. But overall, if we can we can see that this biomedical science have sixty percent open access publications, and here mathematics is about fifty percent, and this forty percent. If we can see the social sciences around uh, the less than 30% and chemistry is still le less than 20% uh, so open access publishing. So this is sub subject by situation of open access availability of research literature. Now come to the Indian scenario. Uh, in India, uh, around uh, 326 open access journals are indexed in, in the directive of open access journals. And uh, if we can see the Scopus database, the total 484 journals are in, in indexed in the Scopus database, out of which around uh, 200 are open access journals. Similarly, in Web of Science, uh, 224 journals are indexed from India, out of which uh, 129 journals are open access. If we can see the digital repositories, open access repositories, uh, uh, out of this uh, around 6,000 uh, open access repositories in the world, uh, 105 digital repositories are in, from India, that is 1.78%. Now come to the OA mandates and policies. This is a uh, very important aspects uh, for the 
success success of open access publishing that is mandates and policies in india there is a lack of open access mandates and policies by the by, by the government by the publishers as well as by the uh, academic and research institutions if we i have just ch checked the data from the roar map website which provide the open oa mandates and policies of different publishers and academic uh, institutions and research institutions and government agencies only 18 funders academic and research organization in our country have adopted oa mandates and policies that is data from roar map this is a database where you can check the open access mandate and policies of different kinds of academic and research institution in a particular country so indian if we can see the indian scenario of open access literature uh, we have already seen that is at the world level 30% literature is open access but in india it is uh, 22 or 23% around 23 to 22 to 23% literature in scopus database as well as in web of science so we are uh, uh, slow in uh, there is slow progress uh, compared com uh, compared to world level open access ratio our ratio is uh, 7% below from the world average of 30% still this is a good progress in uh, in india this is the open access policies adopted by funders uh, and at the world level we have discussed in, the, in india that is eight, only 18 funders uh, 18 institutions adopted open access uh, mandates and policies and this is the scenario at the world level open access policies of publisher and journals that is data from um, share 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 per that provide the public policies of the journals and publishers that is open access uh, availability of research so this is not very much relevant to us come to the indian uh, scenario uh, about the open access mandates and policies so ugc regulations for the award of phd and mphil, MPhil and phd degree 2009 where an electronic thesis need to be submitted at the time of uh, submission of the PhD the thesis and it make it should be uh, deposited to uh, the Shodh Ganga repository. And today we have Shodh Ganga where uh, the thesis which are uh, submitted in the universities, different universities need, are available in the public domain. So this, uh, this is the mandatory provisions at the time of submission of a thesis and the researcher need to submit uh, uh, the, uh, CD, uh, uh, the soft copy of the thesis, and this thesis is forwarded to the libraries of the same institution, and the li library upload the thesis at the Shodh Ganga repository after the award of the PhD. Then there is another national data sharing and accessibility policy of the government, where data sets, applications, under catalog published by different government in entities in open app format. There is no limit, uh, the time limit is mentioned. And this uh, the, the, the data of gov government data of different ministries and different departments is available at, at uh, data.gov.in. Uh, this is a platform supporting data initiatives of uh, government data initiatives of government of India. Then uh, the first uh, uh, the policy uh, open access mandate and open access uh, policy was adopted by Indian Council of, uh, Council of Agriculture Research in 2013, where authors' final version of manuscripts accepted for publications can be can be deposited in the institutional repository of the ICAR that is called Kirshi, Kirshi Kosh. That is uh, the centralized repository that provide uh, that provide the facility of storing and providing access to the publications in the field of agriculture sciences. Immediate after the acceptance of manuscript, or if any embargo uh, by publisher should not be later than 12 months. So yeah, to immediately uh, we can submit in the Kirshi repository or we need to wait for embargo period if there is embargo, but not later than 12 months. This is the policy of the uh, mandates of the ICAR. DBT and DST Department of Biotechnology and Departments of Science and Technology also adopted a policy in 2014, where the final accepted manuscripts after referring or revisions need to be submitted. And this is for the uh, for science, technology, and medicine six month embargo period. 
and for humanities 12 month if there is no publishers embargo within two week of acceptance this is the policy of uh, mandate mandates of the uh, this dbt and dst that if the publication belong to science and technology then the you can wait for six month if it is belong to human immunities you can wait for 12 months and if there is no publishers embargo then you can you need to submit or need, uh, need to upload immediately that is within two week of acceptance of the articles and the author must deposit to ir that is uh, science central repository this uh, the repository which is developed by these institutions is science central repository where you can archive you can submit your accepted manuscripts for making it publicly available then csir oa mandates uh, this full text and metadata of csir funded research paper published from all csir laboratories so you we know that there are more than 40 uh, laboratories which come under the purview of council of scientific and industrial research and uh, every funded research the outcome of every funded uh, research need to be made publicly available there is no limit no time limit is mentioned in the policy all laboratories of csir are required to submit or deposit their own interoperable institution that is csir central a centralized institutional repository hosting service for csir lab so they have also developed their own centralized uh, uh, institutional repository for all the labs and uh, any research which is conducted or funded by funded to any of the researcher in any of the laboratories it uh, its arts come uh, outcome need to be uh, make available in the public domain so in our country we can see these are the important uh, bodies and institutions that have adopted open access mandate and policies but uh, still there is uh, there are many other funding bodies as well as different academic institutions and research institution they have no clear open access mandate and policies that is uh, that is why we are basically behind in the race of the open access movement now this is recently government take it, uh, took an important initiative that is one subscription one nation one sub subscription and centralized funding for a paying apc so one nation and one subscription uh, is uh, I, i hope that most of uh, the uh, academician as well as particularly the librarians are uh, uh, aware about this one nation one subscription policy this draft of fifth national science technology and innovative policy seeks to make scholarly research papers and literature accessible for free to everyone in the country through one nation one subscription plan that means instead of uh, providing Um, grants of money to different institutions academic institutions for purchasing of different journals and databases what uh, can be done uh, as, uh, the government through a committee can negotiate with publishers and uh, the subscription should be taken for the whole country that is one nation one subscription instead of uh, uh subscribing individually by uh, individually individual subscription by individual uh, institution uh one subscription is uh, can be uh, uh, taken and uh, there should be a negotiation with the publishers so this is, is still in progress and for this year there is a relaxation but maybe in the next year this policy will be implemented and there is one nation one subscription policy however this is no this, there is no relationship with the open access movement the another important thing is in, in the same policy is that uh, that is a central fund would in uh, should be developed and uh, for a researcher to submit article to journals who charge the which charge the apc it means if uh, for for just making the help to the researchers in india a centralized uh, system should be shall be developed and uh, if your article is basically accepted for publication then you can make uh, make a request to this particular uh, centralized centralized agency and then this centralized agency will pay on your behalf this apc charges but is, there is no further progress this is the part of policy that is draft policy of fifth national science and technology if it is adopted then it will help the researchers who are not in a position to make the apc payment it there from their own back pocket 
so this is really very much beneficial for those researchers who have not uh, who have uh, who have uh, doing this without funds and who are not getting fund fund for the for the particular research so this will help to such types of researchers now come to the impact of open access uh, some of the impact we have already discussed but here there are uh, there may be academic impact of open access there is uh, the economic impact and the societal impact so academic impact means that is higher impact of scholarly articles including greater readership and greater citations so we have already discussed uh, in detail about uh, this uh, uh, academic Im impact uh, uh, of the research if research is uh, openly accessible then uh, obviously it will be cited more times and it uh, may be busy, uh, read by many pupils this increased scholarship impacts which reflect on the institutions and the researchers and oa article consistently cited in higher numbers and more uh, uh, qualitative than non oa articles but uh, the thing is that this is uh, not, uh, there is a, some sort of research which can prove that open access research is cited more times so research uh, which were, which have been conducted in different fields in different subjects varies widely on how big the difference in different disciplines so uh this uh, the, i i have just uh, reviewed 70 studies that investigated the citation advantage of open access and non open access articles so these studies uh, investigated the citation advantage were grouped by their conclusion so majority of the studies concluded that there is a significant citation advantage for open access articles and uh, this uh, data from open access citation advantage service is spark europe i have taken data from that there so out of the, the 70 studies that investigated the citation advantage of open access articles around uh, 46 studies found that uh, there is a clear cut citation advantage of open access articles there are a few studies that uh, their fi findings are inconclusive and uh, found non significant advantage and there are 17 studies that found that there is no citation advantage of open access articles so still uh, majority are not uh, out of 70 studies which have been conducted 46 studies recommended and found that uh, there is a clear cut citation advantage of open or academic uh, advantage of open access publication. This is another <clears throat> study, uh, recent study, which uh, citation impact of OA or overall publications. So this is the ratio of all papers, that is the average citation rate is one, and for OA paper it is 1.18. So this is a large level of samples the and the, this is clear cut uh, 0.818 is the citation advantage to open access publication however open overall uh, citation rate is one but uh, the open access uh, the uh, the uh, the citation impact of open access papers is 1.18 so this is a recent study which clearly uh, indicated that uh, there is a citation advantage to open access publications now come to the uh, economic impact of open access so uh, this is a very uh, important thing that uh, uh, the cost of journal published by toll access publishers rising no institution can afford a subscription to every journal the problem was that every year the the, the price of the journals are in, uh, increased and there is a problem of the inflation and uh, libraries are getting the le less funds and uh, the, the only solution is to cut some of the subscriptions some of the journals so many libraries have had to cut their journal subscription in order to meet budgetary constraints so this was the situation open access removed that burden because uh, uh, when all when, when the open access journals uh, started and um, even if 50 percent open access journals are there then this kinds of burdens can be removed. Traditional publishing is associated with the pay to access model or OA publication is, uh, publishing is associated with pay to publish model. 
this is a very important thing. Pay to access means if you are paying for access, you are means that is not necessary. You are paying, but on behalf of you, uh, your library is paying. In 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 academic institutions like we are the faculty members, we are the uh, scholars. We are not paying for from our own pocket, but uh, our library is paying on our behalf. So this is called pay to access. We are get paying for access of a particular research. Now open access publishing is associated with pay to publish. It means now authors need to pay for that. Author need to pay for publishing their articles, but this is not 100% correct. As I mentioned that out of 18,000 journals, open access journals, around 12,000 journals are not demanding article processing charges. So still we have the options that we can publish without pay. OS such as to revenue source from subscriber to the authors who are willing to pay APCs to make their research as widely available as possible. But the situation has remained the same that uh, the earlier publishers making money from the subscriptions and uh, now they are making money from the authors by collecting APC charges. So there is no study which can uh, the study has not been conducted on this aspects, how much there is a economic impact of open access to these kinds of things. But there is a few studies recently uh, conducted to just, uh, in India, even one studies which is not published, it is in, uh, in, in the publication process. This, uh, this study tried to measure how much money has been paid by the uh, researchers in, uh, in India for as a article processing charges. So uh, that uh, the authors collected uh, the data from different websites on different sources, and they just try to make uh, argument at how much money we have pay for article processing charges, and if the same kind same money is to be used for different other purposes. So this is one argument of the, of the the authors of that study, but there is no clear cut data for uh, about this impact economic impact of open access just like the uh, acad uh, academic impact uh, there is no data for eco economic impact of open access publisher has to cover operating cost uh, that is uh, uh, not important for us but uh, the average production cost for a single research article is estimated to be around uh, dollar th uh, th 3500 to 4000 to cover those cost and make a profit, closed access publishers ch charge for access via subscriptions. Many publishers have moved toward a peer to publish model, and uh, but uh, the, 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 these, there is can increase barrier to participation for those without funds. This might impact early career researchers and those working in fields where research grants and publishing fees are more difficult to obtain. So still there are problems. Some funding bodies make it make the made the provisions for paying of APC, but uh, those who are not able to uh, get the funds for public research, uh, such types of researchers uh, facing the problems for that. This is, I already make the point, uh, highlight the point that around 70% of peer reviewed OI journals do not charge APC according to the data from directory of open access journals. So still we have the options to publish in without pay, without APC, we can publish our journals in the open access, articles in open access journals. Now come to the societal impact of open access and this, uh, how the society is getting the benefits of open access. Open access to scholarly literature does, uh, does not just benefit academics, but also has wider impact on other domains of the society. When an article is open access, it's much more likely to be read by readers outside the academia. Access to scientific knowledge and information is regarded as fundamental aspect of global human equality. That is in Article 27 of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights state that everyone has the uh, right to freely participate in the cultural life of community to enjoy the arts and share in scientific research advancement and its benefit. So research funded by public fund should be freely available to the public. This is very important point that uh, I need to discuss. Uh, this uh, public, uh, uh, the, the reason and the logic behind this open access movement was that is publicly funded research should be available free to public. It means 
if a researcher get funds for research this is the fund collected through the tax from the public so a particular research which is funded research is basically the money of the public and then after conducting the research the research outcome is published in the subscription based journals and then we need to pay for pay, pay again for getting access to the results so we are paying for research as a general public we are paying for conducting research and then we need to pay again for getting the outcome of that research so this is uh, not a logical thing i know the open access philosophy is basically on this logic that public funded research should be available to the public free of cost openly available research output advance citizen uh, science initiative label and there are many other ad advantages that we have uh, discussed but the important aspect is that is uh, uh the the balance uh, between those having rich resources and those who are who do not having such level of resource that the point that i have already discussed in detail so this uh, open access uh, movement uh, just try to remove such types of uh, barriers uh, between a part of society where the resources are limited and the part of society where resources are not limited for example there are developing countries and developed countries like europe and united states where uh, they have much resources particularly the financial 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 resources they can subscribe many journals many databases but the countries uh, developing countries cannot do it so there is a <clears throat> difference of difference of in the opportunities of accessing information so this uh, open access movement uh, uh, reduce this gap between the developed nations and the developing nations so this is the impact on the society open access uh, the uh, open access movement so impact of open access movement on the society so this is a, a brief uh, overview of open access publishing it's, it's uh, the trends at the world level and in india and uh, its impacts on different uh, perspective like academic and economic and societal so thank you once again for uh, providing me this opportunity to share my uh, views on this particular topic uh, thank you sir Barma ji, uh, are are you here? If there is any question answer session, so uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, namaskar, sir. Uh, so, dear friends, uh, uh, if you are having any question, please put up in chat uh, chat box or Q and A box. Uh, so far, we have not received any question. Uh, only thank yous are coming, sir. No questions. But friends, we are waiting for some questions from your side. Uh, it's not there, sir. So no question. Questions are not coming. I think uh, there may be some uh, something which is not clearly communicated to the uh, to the audience. That is why there is no question. I think. Or or maybe very clear. <laughs> Let's see the positive side. <laughs> so, okay, so far, no questions, sir. So, uh, we may conclude the session in that case. Or if you want to say something, you can ex extend a little bit.
Okay, so if you uh, this is uh, basically uh, from my side, uh, I have just discussed them all the important points. If uh, there may be any questions about it, uh, so it would be better to just uh, take up that particular aspects. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know the about the participants, uh, the level of uh, research and the involvement in the research. But I will recommend uh, the researchers, uh, uh, the academicians, and the participants at least to know what is open access, at least they should know about uh, the open science, open science. And uh, they, whenever they try to publish their research, they try to find a, a good, a particular journals uh, from the directory of open access journals, and then try to publish in open access journals. So this is, uh, then only we will be able to make uh, this open access movement successful in our country because uh, this is the contribution from every members and be as a as a responsible citizen of the country this is our responsibility to make our research in public domain so that everyone can read it everyone can get benefit of this research even not necessary that is the research if we if we are uh, we are writing a book there are different platforms for open access books through through that we can make our books in public domains. So this is something that we are providing a gift to the society. So uh, this is possible only when there is a uh, sufficient level of uh, awareness about the open access movement, the benefits of open access publishing, and then we can only uh, opt open access publishing model. And we have already discussed there are three different models, gold, green, and hybrid. If you are not adopting gold, so at least green model can be adopted. Green means that you publish whether in uh, open access journals or subscription journal, but at least you can make a copy of it in the public domain by archiving at the research gate or at the institutional repository. So this is uh, this is a small contribution of every academician and researchers can make the open access movement successful. This is sir, my is it, uh, sir. Is it uh, correct to upload papers on ResearchGate if it is uh, not open source? We can submit. Uh, we can upload a paper, but uh, the thing is that that is preprint and postprint. We cannot submit uh, the final version that is in PDF version of the. Uh, of the articles in any of the gate, uh, network, whether it is a research gate or it is institutional repository. It is the violation of uh, well, the copyright. Yes, yes, yes. Only preprints can be submitted or deposited. Okay, preprints can be submitted. Yes, yes, preprint can be submitted. Okay. Okay, sir, the, so far no question came. Uh, only one uh, message from Priyanka Kalita is there that, uh, sir, everything has been clearly conveyed by you. Okay, so thank you. Resume, uh, all the points are clear to the participants, and we conclude the session here itself. Okay, okay, thank uh, you, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, so, and thank you, special thanks to you, sir. At last moment, we contacted you and you agreed to come because all of a sudden, uh, 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 as per our schedule, we had to change some schedule, and you agreed for that. So, thanks a lot for uh, uh, sparing time for us. Thank you, sir. And in future, also, we will be calling you for some other courses. So, okay. Sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, on behalf of all the participants, on behalf of HRDC Mizoram University, on behalf of uh, the coordinator, Professor Manoj, and on my personal behalf, I would like to say thanks to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, friends, uh, our next session is at three. Take 10, 15 minutes break and join by three, and we'll be having the fourth session. So, see you all at 3 p.m.